We're going to go ahead and be begin uh, with Tennessee. Just a quick note to the all-tournament team uh, from Texas A&M, Quentin Jackson, Henry Coleman from Tennessee, Kennedy Chandler, uh, Santiago Vescovi, and uh, Josiah Jordan-James. MVP was Chandler. And uh, we'll uh, ask Coach if he'll give us a few uh, opening thoughts on the game, and then we'll hopefully have a couple of players and then go to questions. Coach? Well, my first thought is that Texas A&M should be in the NCAA tournament. I, I think that the job that uh, Coach Williams and his staff did through this tournament, uh, I felt all year that the SEC was the best basketball league in the country, and for them to do what they did over four days was really remarkable. And, uh, I, again, uh, I, I, they deserve to be in a tournament. But I'm uh, very proud of our team. Uh, these guys have worked hard. They, they've, uh, they deserve what they, they've been able to achieve here. And, um, but I am truly thank the good Lord for the blessing of having a chance to be associated with them. And the opportunity that I've have been given at the University of Tennessee, we've got a great leadership there. And, but this game today was uh, what we thought it would be. Uh, you know, we knew they were going to fight. And every, even when we got off to a great league, we, in our timeout, say, these guys are not going to go, they're not going to go away. And uh, they went in zone. And we did not handle it very well. It was a great move on their part. It slowed us down. And then uh, we didn't get the movement that we wanted. And that, that's, that's on me. But uh, the fact is that we, we, we defended the way that we're capable of and made big shots when, we, when they made a push to get back. And Santi, through that stretch, I think he scored seven, eight, nine points somewhere in there, which was a, a big part of the game to give us a little bit more breathing room. All right, let's go ahead and go, let's go ahead and go to questions. Uh, let's just start right here in the middle on the, on the front. is guard play gets more important. What do you think about the play you're getting from those three guys right now, Josiah and you know, Santi and, and Kennedy? Well, it is. And, you know, when you, when you think about our guard play, it's – we've uh, – that's – they pretty much have – you know, we – in the past, Rob, you know, we've been more of a inside-out throw it to a post guy play through. But these guys have learned to give us a post presence with their, with their cutting their, and their, uh, their penetration with the ball. It's uh, – uh, Again, the way they've grown into the confidence they have for each other is really something that we're all proud of. And, uh, and it, as you know, it's, it is key. It really is. But uh, the, all of them at different times throughout the game today made big plays for us. Okay, let's stay on the front row right here. Rick, as your team was, was getting the trophy, Donnie Plowman and Danny White were, were over there getting it, and you were standing far off to the side just kind of watching and clapping. Why was it? important you to be over there and, and what was that scene like for you well I think it's third time I've been doing this a long time and, and I, I kept telling them the last couple of days this this time of year is about players it's not going to be about plays and this and that's going to be about players and players making plays and I think it's a uh, it's something that they'll forever enjoy throughout their life and and uh, I've been doing this a long time and and I, and I think it's their time I really do I, I think it's their time and I'm, I'm so proud of them because of I know the work they've put in how hard they've trained and uh Again, I, I just think it's their moment. It's their time to get the trophy. It's their time to cut the nets down. And um, they came to Tennessee to help us make it a special place. They've done that. But uh, uh, it, it's, it's truly, it's their time. All right, we're going to stay with players for uh, our questions for Coach. Let's stay on the front row right here. Go ahead. Rick, it's, it's been a while since Tennessee did this. Why was this weekend different? Why was today different? You know, I, I think it, it started a year ago. Uh, you know, when we uh, had lost, we came back. And I remember uh, I had an article I read about uh, Michael Jordan talking about leadership. And I actually said to him, I don't think we can go any further unless it comes from you guys. And from that day, Josiah, Santi, uh, those two guys in particular, uh, I think uh, not only because, you know, the, when they were out with injuries, their involvement, or I mean, it was incredible, the leadership where it changed. But I really felt like about a month ago, a little bit over a month ago, when they started coaching each other during the game, where they were uh, open to each other, even if it was something, hey, that's, that's, not, that's a tough shot. we got to get better. And, and we said for us to move forward, we're going to have to have great leadership because uh, we've always been a team that practiced hard and done all those type things. But in the game and watching these guys take over and talk, communicate, it's been fun. But um, that's where it started it, with uh, a, a year ago, with uh, them deciding that, hey, the leadership had to really come from it within, and, and we've gotten it. 
All right, front row left, go ahead. Rick, I'm just wondering what this, this particular achievement means to you and your players. It seemed like there was a lot of emotion afterward, especially with John Fulkerson and a lot of the guys. Well, it, it, you know, you, I, I said it, I think, yesterday. You know, this time of year, everybody wants to win. They want to keep winning. They, they, it's, that's what we do. And, and uh, But, you know, Folky, you know, I've, I've been at the University of Tennessee seven years. He's been a part of six of them. And uh, last year was a tough year for him and, and the way it ended. But for him to come back and – I think the emotion he's carried for a long time. I mean, he went into a totally different role this year, which he fully accepted. And but you look at him and you look at our teams. I mean, we we're like all teams. You know, you go through the ups and downs of being on the roller coaster of a college basketball season. But these guys have had the the, the chemistry amongst themselves, where they they have they have all, in so many ways, stepped aside and with whatever they might have as their own goals to say the biggest thing is this team and this program and they and they pull for each other they play for each other and and, uh, and it's really fun to see but I think this time of year when you talk about teams that are winning I think that's probably the common denominator with most of them all right uh, we're going to go to uh, student athlete questions here and so we can get them out uh, raise your hand questions for any of the student athletes start right on the front row in the middle Josiah, Coach just mentioned chemistry. You, you, you're a big part of that, it seems like. What can, can you speak to the chemistry on this team, and how do you feel that shows up on the court? I mean, this is by far, I've said it um, since the summertime, or early in the season, that this was the cro closest group of, um, the closest team that we've had since I've been here. And that's no knock on any other team. Um, but it's just a praise to this team about how much we care about each other um, on and off the court. I mean. Last year was tough because of COVID. I think that this year we came into a role where we, we really didn't want to take anything for granted. So we started doing things, uh, doing more things on and off the court um, just to build our chemistry, just to hang out more. And uh, we truly do like each other. We really do. Um, the brotherhood that we have in this locker room, like I wouldn't want any other, any other guys in that locker room. I wouldn't trade them for the world. And so I think that just helps us on the court. We know we've been playing with each other for a, a pretty good, a, a long time now. And so we have a feel for each other. But I mean, I, I feel like this chemi chemistry is second to none. Okay, question in the middle on the front row. A, a leadership void after that loss to, to Kentucky at Rupp, just kind of what changed in the last month and a half that kind of allowed you to turn y'all to turn this season around and, and cut the nuts down today? Um, I just feel like we just kept chipping away at it. Um, I feel like like I, I feel like everything happens for a reason. Um, we took, we started off the SEC play two and three, and a lot of people doubted us, but we in the locker room, everybody, coaches and players included, never really had our, held our heads down. We just came in and worked each and every day, and that's what Coach Barnes requ requires. That's what our coaching staff requires, and that's what we started to require out of each other, just to keep getting better each and every day. We knew it was a long season, um, but we just, I mean, it's just a daily grind here, and so I feel like uh, we kept taking steps to get better, and we still have a long way to go, but that's what led us to this point today. Okay, question on the front row on the left. Josiah Rick mentioned that this started a year ago with that article about Michael Jordan and leadership. How vivid are your memories of, of that moment? Was that after Oregon State or uh, after the SEC tournament? It's very vivid. Um, it was after Oregon State, and um, I remember sitting in the locker room, and it was just a long passage. And that was the day we got back from um, – wherever we were, yeah, Indianapolis. And um, that was the first thing when we came together as a, as a group um, this year over the summer. That was the first thing he put up. So it was the last thing from last season and the first thing from this season, just talking about leadership, how hard it is. You're not going to be liked all the time and how Michael Jordan led his team and how what type of leader he was. And so that mem memory is very vivid. And so he, he preached that uh, at the start of the season, and it just um, kind of spewed out of everybody else because we – like three guys up here, especially Santi. I mean, we we took it on our shoulders because we didn't like how last season ended, um, and so we just tried to do what Coach asked of us, and it led us to this point. Let's get a question on the second row right here, and then we'll come right to the front row on the aisle. Kennedy, you get an injury your ankle two, three minutes into the first game this weekend. Just what did it mean to for you to win MVP and play through that injury? Uh, you know, that wouldn't happen without these two guys and my teammates for me to be able to make that happen, you know. I know that I twist my ankle, but, you know, I wanted to fight through, you know, come back and play with my guys, you know, win the SC championship, and that's what happened today. 
Okay, question front row. Go ahead. Uh, this is for Josiah and Santi. When you guys kind of got done cutting the net, you guys looked for him pretty fast and, and ran to put that, that net around his neck. What did that mean to you to, to be able to do that? And what was that moment like for both of you? Josiah? This man right here means the world to me. I mean, I, I owe him my life. He, he took a chance on me. He gave me the opportunity um, to go to the University of Tennessee to be coached by him. And I, I, I never want to take it for granted. And so just to see all of our hard work, I mean, he pushes us each and every day. He, he never takes a day off. And so, I mean, it's just a lot of emotion came out of us. But it, we, we have to credit him because without him, we wouldn't be here. And without him, I wouldn't be half the player, half the man I am. And so, I mean, I just have so much love for him. Uh, yeah, uh, going off what Joe said, uh, I think Coach means a lot to every single one of us in the team. Uh, he was one of the biggest parts uh, in this whole process. Uh, I think uh, in terms of uh, leadership, he did a great job too, uh, especially setting us up for uh, also like being leaders ourselves. And whenever we were cutting the net, uh, Joe came up to me and we looked at each other and we we're like, yeah, we need to get coach. Like we know he's not going to go up there to get it. So uh, we know how much he means for he means for every single one of us and for the whole team. So uh, we wanted to share that moment with him too, uh, especially knowing that he took a chance on every single one of us coming to the University of Tennessee, uh, coaching us, and he puts the work every single day. Uh, he's probably watched more film than anybody else in this world. Uh, so he puts the work every single day, uh, and I think uh, yeah, we just wanted to share that moment, that really cool moment with him. All right, we'll take a couple more. Let's take one in the back on the aisle, and then we'll come right down to the front row. Uh, for any of you guys, how well do you think you guys defended here this week, and especially defending the three-pointer? Santiago, would you take that one? Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, the whole team uh, did a great job. Uh, I think defensive, uh, the defensive part, it's uh, our identity. Uh, that's what we thrive for. And I think also coaches are doing a really good job putting uh, us in a good spot uh, to be successful, putting us in the great spot to, in terms of scouting, knowing who we're playing against, uh, how do we have to guard every single team. They did a great job with that. And also I think the players uh, did a great job also. Uh, we did a great job putting our bodies in the line every single time, leaving everything, uh, our hearts and our bodies on the court uh, on every single play. And we just wanted it. So uh, we knew what it was going to take. So. I think we did a uh, terrible effort uh, on the court. It was just amazing to see everybody uh, put their body on the line. Question? Kennedy, you could have gone anywhere in the country, and, and you chose to, chose to play for him. How satisfying is it to have the seasons you've had, win the SEC tournament, win the MVP award? You feel like you know, it, it kind of went according to plan? What did you ask him that two months ago or, or today? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I came to Tennessee for a reason. I knew Coach Barnes was going to push me to be the best player I could be. And that's what we did from the jump, you know. Um, just about watching film with him. Just, I, caught, I came to Tennessee and thought I was, I was going to come in here. It's going to be easy. But Coach Barnes let me know that every game is going to be difficult. Every game is not going to be easy. You're going to see different things, different reads. And that's one thing that I've learned since I came to Tennessee. He's taught me so much. I can't even say all of them, honestly. But I just love him for that. And, I know that I want him to push me every single day to be the best player I could be. And that's what he's done ever since I've been here. All right, we're going to excuse the players. You can return to the locker room. Thank you. And let's pick back up with questions for Coach. Let's start right back in the way back there. Hey, hey Rick. So going back to that Texas game where Josiah missed that shot at the end, it seemed like there was something about that missing the shot. And he took over the next four to five weeks and took his game to a different level. Did you notice anything from that? In, in yeah. I, I, you know, I didn't put a lot of emphasis on me going back to Texas. I just said, hey, we're, it, this is business. I know they're going to do – and I'm appreciative of, of what they did. But, Joe, I, I know how badly they wanted to win that game for me. I, I really did. And when I finally got to the locker room, Joe was very, very upset. And I said, hey, this is going to help us in the whole process of what we're trying to do. I, I love you for – Again, because I, I know how bad he wanted that shot to go in, but uh, uh, that was a, a really, in some ways, a, is a big turning point uh, for I thought Kennedy 
after the game, he had a. We've talked about it before. He had a, a real, I think, man-to-man -man talk with T.J. Ford that would, I think, really helped him. He, he has had a total different focus since then. But I've never questioned Josiah. I mean, since he's been here, I mean, he came in and think about it. He had to start out. We didn't have a point guard. He had to play it. And he, Santi came in. Those two guys helped us really stabilize our program when it was teetering because of uh, who we lost. Uh, you know, Lamonte Turner getting injured had to had to uh, couldn't finish the year, and but uh, those two guys have have been a dream, and any coach would want to coach them. Let's go to the front row on the aisle. How do you balance enjoying this and trying to quickly turn the page? You know, for me, it, it's it, I mean, I want those guys to enjoy it. I've never been one to enjoy a lot until after the season's over with and you reflect that on it because I'm always thinking, you know, next, next, next. And, and uh, uh, but I'm, I'm really happy that, that these guys, and they, they, they should enjoy it because it's, it's, it's very hard to win a championship in, at any level, uh, regular season, postseason, conference tournament, NCAA, it's hard. And when, and when they do it, it's, uh, it's something they should enjoy it. And, I, and I'm, I'm really ecstatic for our program and but for these guys and for our university. I, I can't say enough again about our fans, that, you know, the ones that could get here. They were awesome. They made their presence felt here again today. But, uh, and f again, for me personally, I just, I've said it before, I just, uh, the good Lord's blessed me in so many ways and having a chance to be with this group has been special. My coaches, I, I can't say enough about them. I mean, uh, Santi mentioned that the, the job they do with our, our game preparation. It's just been phenomenal across the board. And, and uh, again, the one thing I told him when they told me about cutting S, I said, I'm not cutting them down until you get Chad, uh, Garrett, Mary Carter, all the people behind the scene that make this thing go that people don't realize. And, and I, I think it's great that they wanted to get our managers and GAs and everybody up there because we really do have a, a special family. And, and uh, all we talk about is getting better each day. And I think this group has tried to, to do that. Right, next question in the middle, right here on the second row. There you go. You lost Eves, Keon, Jaden, and have gotten better defensively this year. Just how how has that happened? Now what? How have y'all gotten, be gotten better defensively after losing? Well, I, I think a couple of things. You know, uh, you know, Santi and Joe pr probably don't get enough recognition for their defense, and they're both in elite shape. I mean, if you really want to write a great story, ask Garrett about how many miles Santi has ran this year. He's probably ran, I'm going to say, 30 miles, 40 miles more than anybody on our team because when those guys are in practice, they don't want to come out unless we pull them out. You know, they want to stay. They want to get their work done like that. But, uh, you know, we speed. Zakai uh, came in. He brought us something. I mean, really and truly, we thought we were going to redshirt Zakai. We did. When we, we thought with – I said to our guys during the summer, towards the end of the summer, I said, I don't want to ever be caught without a point guard. And I said, you know, we always take projects, mostly post players. That's what we've always done. And then this was going on when uh, down in, when the Peach Jam was going on, and they said, well, hey, both Mike and Rob saw him, and and they uh, and we got on it. And he came in late, as we know, but then uh, his presence was felt very quickly. And I've said all along, he and Santi have been the biggest teachers for Kennedy because the way Santi's relentless in the way he he goes at it and Kennedy I will tell you when he first got here had no one ever defend him like Zakai no one def uh, that defended him like S Santi in a different way but I, I think it started with with that the attitude and practice with those guys uh, getting 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 at it and then we knew we had uh, some young post guys and guys that had not ever been in prime time roles that we're going to have to get ready in, in the post but uh and you guys have watched this practice. You know we start every day with, with our defense, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to do that, obviously. All right, front row on the left. Yeah, Rick, talking about that uh, the article of Michael Jordan, how, how difficult is it when you have a team of you know nice guys who like each other this much to get them to sort of be willing to be frank and, and open like that on the court? Well, I, I think at the end of the year when things end, and, and you know, and, and last year was a totally different year. so. Again, it, it was different in so many different ways. But, you, you know, coaching uh, is hard in terms of, you know, you, you want 
to demand the very best from every player. And sometimes players feel like it's not the right way to go about it. And it's our job to figure out, you know, what is the best way to coach and motivate each and individual player. But with that said, the championship teams, the great teams, you know it comes from within. And basically that article was Michael Jordan talking about where he wasn't afraid and he talked about how difficult it is to call to call your teammates out, but yet love them the same way off the court. But understand, when we're on the floor. We've got work to take care of. Uh, you got to. And the biggest thing was want, wanting to be coached in terms of letting your guard down and, and not being afraid to let your guard down and 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 accept what you really are good at and be willing to work at the things that 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 you need to work at. But uh, and. I can remember vividly when, when Joe and, and Santi were out early in the season, how hard they coached on the sideline, where they were constantly coaching the, the guys. And, and we had a lot of young guys out there. but uh, And we're young. I mean, there's been times this year we've had three or four freshmen on the court. But, uh, again, their leadership, I think, is truly the difference in where we've been in the last couple of years. All right, question in the back on the right. Coach, in 1960, the U.S. beats Russia in the hockey but the gold medal game's the next one. You spent a lot of emotional capital against Kentucky. How important was it to remind the guys one more step? Well, we, we, we did address it, that we'd been here before, and that uh, uh, actually, again, today, again, I'll give really great credit to my, my coaches. They're always looking for angles to uh, keep these guys present uh, in, in the right now to stay in the moment. And Coach Gainey today pulled up a clip of uh, – uh, Kobe Bryant, and they had up two games, and one of the reporters said, well, you don't seem like you're very happy. He said, we're not done. We're not finished. And so there's – because it's, it's hard. I mean, they're kids, and they, they should enjoy this. But we, we came here, you know, we, we, we said uh, – we started talking four or five weeks ago about every game's a playoff game because we knew we were still wanted to try to stay in the hunt for a SEC regular season championship. And we came here, the message was on uh, Friday night, this is the championship game. And we said yesterday, this is the championship game. And we said it again today, this is the championship game. That was something that Coach Sanderson always said, you know, in tournament time, because if you don't play it like it, there will be no tomorrow. And, uh, but we also tried to just stay with our routine that we do. And, and, uh, but there's, again, my assistants do just an incredible job not only what we do as a team, but working behind the scenes, talking to them, delivering messages that we think each individual guys. And I will tell you this, the guys that don't play, it's really hard when you go to them and tell them, because when we go into a game, we don't know exactly how it's going to shake out. But I can't tell you how many times, for instance, uh, DJ Bailey, uh, Jemai, uh, Quentin, you got to be ready. And it's hard as a player to think, hey, maybe I'm going to get to play and not get to play. But the way those guys have continued to hold on to the rope, because we go into games thinking, hey, we might need those guys. And uh, so, again, I'm really proud of not just the guys that, that we see out there, but it's those other guys that are in practice every day doing what they need to do to stay ready when their number is called. We'll take two more quick questions, go to the middle there, and then we'll finish up right here on the front row. You said you were planning on redshirting Zakai. Was there a specific instance or something that happened that changed your mind? Yeah, the way he guarded. <laughs> right off the bat, his defense. And, uh, you know, I would have – if you'd have told me the first and, – and, again, I'm still not so sure now. I would have told you I, th I think he's the best shooter on our team. I mean, and then every time I walk through the, our practice facility, whatever time of day when we were done, he was he was in there working. And we kept telling him some things he had to work on. And and uh, he's a tough guy. You know what, he's, he's very – he knows how to handle me. He, he does. He knows when I get mad, he just walks by me like my wife does. Like, you know, you know, just, yeah, say what you want to say, but I got it, you know, and he's – which is smart. And I think that's part of leadership. I think Josiah and Santi have told those guys, you know, coach is going to tell you how he feels and don't take it personal. Just know that – just listen to him. And sometimes I – probably more in practice than a game I get emotional with him because, you know, I don't want to see mistake after mistake after mistake and I can stop it. I can't during the game, but uh, but right off the bat, you knew he he had a the DNA that he, this guy's going to he's going to play. All right, last question, right on the front row. Rick, does it matter to you being a two or a three seed where you are regionally, and what about this team 
do you believe gives it a chance to make well, a deep Well, again, I can set up here and tell you, I, again, I, I said coming into this tournament, if any of the top four teams win the tournament, they should be on the one line. I've said that because I think our, our, bat, our league is uh, the best in the country. But uh, so I learned a long time ago, you can talk, you're not going to politic for it, uh, you know, because I can say what I want to say. I just, again, want to compliment our league and, and, and again, the way they, they do things as a league, you know, Commissioner Sankey and Dan Leibovich and what Mike Keyes has done with our officials. I mean, this is the best basketball league in the country. And it's hard for me to believe, too, and I, and I get it, you know, all the, the things. But when you go 9-9 nine and nine in, in, a, in a league like this, it's hard for me not to think that we – again, I've said on, on a good year, uh, we should have seven teams in. You know, on a great year, eight or nine. And, and uh, again, I don't care who you play in this league. There was not an easy game. And you look at the job that uh, – again, it, it'll, it'll be a real mistake if Texas a and is not in this tournament. I don't care about – anything else because what they've done and the way they have played here at the end of the year and uh, they deserve it. But again, I, again, nine and nine in this league, I, I'm just, I, again, I'm partial to it, but uh, wherever they, they put us, we'll go, got to be ready to play. And, uh, uh, but again, I'm just, I'm happy for our guys and, and um, we'll see what happens going forward and got a new season starting again. We, we've got to be ready. Thanks everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you guys.